Unreal Blueprints, Key and Gamepad Events. Let's review what we know. All actors have an event graph. These are where events can be listened to and responded to within the blueprint. When we create a blueprint, we get access to the event graph. Event nodes are in red, and they use the event arrow icon. These are reaction to different events occurring in the level. Different events can be responded to based on their names. So, for example, if we wanted to respond to the on hit event, it would be event on hit in the event graph. So, what we've previously not discussed across these videos are different types of possible input events we might want to also respond to, other than kind of collision code. And these include two important things keyboard and gamepad events, so key and gamepad events. If we start searching for keyboard under the node type, we can get keyboard events. These correspond to the particular key being pressed on the keyboard. We can also search for gamepad events as well. If a gamepad is plugged into the device and Unreal detects it as such, we can also get input from that and correspondingly do different things with it. For example, move a character around on the screen or do a number of other things. On, from this, as mentioned, we could react to different events. We could, for example, move an actor up and down, left and right, corresponding to change and local offset to a delta location, delta meaning change. We can just move something around pressing F or pressing G. There's one final thing, though. When we're using keyboard or really any type of input, we need to enable input for that actor. So to save developers a little bit of heartache um, and frustration, by default, not all actors receive input because if they're not going to do anything, there's really no reason for them to receive input at all. So when we want a particular actor to react to different keyboard or gamepad events, input events, we need to make sure enable input is within the event graph, usually as a result of event begin play. So as soon as event begin play starts, we'll go ahead and enable input for that, which allows input to come off of that. The other thing we need to remember is that Unreal considers each player controller to be different things, or potentially very many things. In this case, though, player index is zero. So the default player controller, which for me is my keyboard and my gamepad, are both under player controller, but we could associate other gamepad and controllers as other gamepads and keyboards as part of other player controllers feed them as into the input pins and potentially use them for other actors to move them around, for example, in a multiplayer game. But for this, we need to remember anytime an actor is potentially going to do something with input, it needs to have input enabled for it. So let's move over to Unreal and look at this in action. So I have already created a blueprint based on the cube. So the cube actor, I pulled over from place actors into a level, dropped it down, and created a blueprint based on it. So what I want to happen is when I press F, I want the cube to move up, so delta plus 10 along the z-axis. When I press G, I want the cube to move down, so negative 10 along the z-axis. So we will be changing the local offset, so whatever the um, transform is of the cube actor. I'm going to move it up or move it down when I press F or press G. So let's go ahead and add those events. I'm going to go ahead and search for keyboard. You could spell keyboard correctly. And I started typing it and it guessed it for me. So let's scroll down to F right here and move this over. Okay. Let's go ahead and search for G. So if I start searching for keyboard again and it will get us there. Throw down slightly more for G. There we go. Fantastic. F and G. So what I want to happen is I want to change this cube's local offset. So basically move it up a tiny bit and move it down a tiny bit. So when I press G, moving off the execution pin, I want to add actor local offset right here and move 10 along the Z. Z is our vertical up and down in Unreal. And then off this, I want to, same thing. Oh. Add actor, local offset. Make sure you spell the name of the nodes correctly. And this time, negative 10. Back down again along the Z. Okay. 
So we would assume possibly we're done now, but we're not. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to enable input, otherwise these keyboard events will not work. So let's base it off of event begin play, drag this off, and then what do we want? We want enable, and then there it is right there, enable input. So we're enabling input for this actor. So notice right here, push this actor on the stack of input being handed by a player controller. And so we need to also tell it where it's getting input from. It's getting input from a player controller. Which player controller? So let's drag off this pin right here and use get player controller right here. And we will take its default of zero. So player index is zero, feeding into this player controller right here, which is where we're getting input from, which is enabled on this uh, blueprint on this actor. And then when we press F, moves up 10 on Z, press G, moves down 10 on Z as well. Let's compile. Okay, everything is good to go. So let's move back to Unreal. Okay. I'll just slightly move out a little bit so we can see this. So what we want to happen is I'm going to click play. I'm going to be facing away from the cube. I'm going to move around to face the cube. And then when I press F, the cube should move up. When I press G, the cube should move down. Okay, let's face the cube. F, 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 G, 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 right through the floor and escape to get out of it. So our actor then has uh, enabled input from player controller zero. When I pressed F, it moved up. When I pressed G, it moved down. Um, for one last thing, let's do a little bit of gamepad input just so we can see that also in action. I have a gamepad in front of me here connected to my local device. We will move back to the blueprint. And what we want now is I want to keep F and G, but now I, what I also want is when I press up on the gay pad, I want the local offset to change. And when I press down on the D pad, I want it to also change. So let's search for game pad. The first one I want is D pad up. Similarly pressed right here. The next thing I want is Game pad D down and pressed here. Notice that now either set, so keyboard or game pad, will also do the same thing. So either of those work. And now we're good to go. So let's minimize this. We'll move back into here, turn around, and now I press the game pad, and you don't hear the keyboard clicking. Up, 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 down, 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 or F and G, or using the controller as well. So now we can see we can also react to and use within the event graph different possible inputs from either the keyboard or the controller which are pretty standard inputs for a lot of different content and especially games within Unreal. We want to know, are we pressing this particular button? Are we doing this particular thing? And then we react to it correspondingly within the level. So this has been a review of these two different types of uh, events that can happen. And we need to remember, if we want an actor to receive input, we have to enable input. Almost always it will be as a result of event begin play. And we need to make sure we're getting the default player controller, which Unreal considers by default zero to be the default keyboard and controller connected to uh, the device on which it's running. And then as we will see in the future, if we wanted to create a multiplayer game, we could set up different potential player controllers to receive inputs in different ways and correspondingly move things within a level in different ways as well.